guys and gals, Nary here from Drake Wing Gaming. And some of you may on Twitter, the Gaming Dragon. Today, I'm coming back at you another Let's Play episode of Chord Progressions. So, yeah, let's go ahead and jump right back into it, shall we? Alarm chain, you are up, and let's go. Alrighty. <clears throat> After a rinse, I reach for my specially formulated conditioner. This particular brand specializes in fox fur, and it has been a game changer for me. My coat has never been so shiny and brilliant. Plus, the conditioner makes my fur feel fantastic. Any boy lucky enough to run his paws through this coat is in for a treat. My fur gains such a soft and velvety texture after a wash. The stuff isn't cheap, but it is absolutely worth it. I consider purchases like these as investments in myself, and it always pays off. I indulge, I indulge in the comfort of the falling water for a few more moments before turning the faucet off. I let my fur drip for a moment before stepping onto the ba stepping onto the bath mat. I reach for my towel and begin. Wait, smell. Oh God damn it! I'm such an idiot. Why the hell did I take the cummy towel with me to dry off with? Son of a... It's fine, I'll just blow dry all the way. Not my favorite thing to do. I usually, I usually like a pat dry first so I'm not sopping wet by the time I turn on the blow dryer. I switch off my tunes and reach over to my sink and grab the cordless blow dryer and get to work on desaturating my fur. Without an initial pat dry, it takes substantially longer. I replace the blow dryer back in its charging dock. I give my fur a thorough brush, brush the teeth, and floss. It was now that I realized my semen-soaked towel has presented to me yet another challenge. The last thing I want to do is wrap this towel around my waist as I make the trek back to my bedroom. I just washed the cum out of this fur. I don't want to get cum back on it. I'm running the risk of having one of these girls see me see me nude, though. If Mariah catches me, she just laugh it off. If April catches me, I may wake up dead tomorrow. If I can just cope out the hallway before I if I can just scope out the hallway before I cross, I should be okay. I cracked open the door to gander outside into the hall. I glance both ways and realize I don't have a line of sight with either girl. Perfect. I retreat back into the bathroom to grab the towel off the rack. I take a moment to find the best way to carry the towel while minimizing contact between my fur and the cum. Finding a good orientation was a little challenging, but I eventually figured it out. Okay, it's time to make my dash. No time to lose. I shut off the bathroom light and open the door. I dash out into the hallway, round about the door, and shut it behind me. I turn around and... Oh, fuck! It's her! Oh, no, 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 no! I fucked up real bad here! I made a calculated risk, but God, I am bad at math! Dude! E, oh shit, oh fuck, I I'm so, so sorry, I thought I could just dash to my room. I checked the hall, I didn't see you. All I wanted to do was make Mad dash to my bedroom, but she's blocking the way. The hall is narrow and she's standing right in the middle. I have to squeeze past her and that feels completely wrong. Being a man, a nude man, approaching a woman who clearly isn't pleased by the sight of me would be the heir of the century. My heart's beating a million times a minute. My legs are completely frozen in place, there's nowhere to go, I'm trapped. You idiot, why the hell don't you have your towel wrapped around you? And what is that smell? What does she mean, what's that smell, doesn't she? Oh wait, it's somewhat reasonable she wouldn't know what semen smells like. That means I can lie. I spilled some chemical in there. I cleaned it up with the towel and I didn't want to wrap the towel around me. Please buy it, please buy it, please buy it. <sighs> Moron, just bring some underwear with you next time or something. I don't, I don't have to look at your body. April steps to the side, granting me passage down the hall. Without a word, I swiftly stride past her and enter my room. I shut the door behind me and immediately flop face first down into the bed. I scream into my pillow as soon as my body hits the mattress. Uh, yeah, she, uh, was not pleased. <laughs> I can't believe that just happened. If I had just waited an extra ten seconds or double-checked the hall, I could have avoided that whole confrontation. Looking back on it, I could have just retreated into the bathroom. God, why did I think of that in the moment? I completely panicked and convinced myself I was trapped. Stupid, stupid, stupid fox. Jeez, and to think I was so optimistic before. I should have known it was a matter of time before I screwed something up. I get up and out of bed one last time to flip off the light switch. I crawl under the covers and rest my head on my pillow. I set my alarm and quickly check my phone. There's a message from Mom. Hi, honey. Please call me your dad some science sometime soon to let us know how the move went. Love you. I should send her a reply. If I don't do it now, I'll forget. Hey, Mom. I'll call you later this week. Gonna be real busy. Uh, I love you, too. Good night. I rest my phone face down on the nightstand, and then I, I then readjust onto my side to get into the optimal comfy position. A lot's happened today. A lot. I haven't felt this exhausted in a while. Let's see what tomorrow's gonna bring. <laughs> e <laughs> e e e e e Mmm, no, fuck that. Snooze. Uh, 
Ah, I gotta get up. Can't make April run late twice in a row. I'll never hear the end of it. Open my weary eyes to glance at my alarm clock. 719. If I get up now, I'll be making a good time. I swing my legs around to the edge of the bed and sit upright. Unlike yesterday, there's no morning wood to greet this new day. I shift my weight up to my feet. They're aching after all the walking and pacing from yesterday. I quickly took care of my bathroom needs and threw on a fresh outfit. I like how they just have, like, a portrait of this, uh, of, like, uh, tits? These tits? These have got to be tits. Just tits on a wall. Okay. Just April out here. She looks ready to go. Oh, man. How am I going to face her? She's seen everything. Is it too late to do the whole steal her car and drive to the Yukon thing? She spots me. Yo. Uh, hey. Good morning. Yeah. Sleep okay? Well enough, I suppose. An awkward silence stretched out for the next few seconds. Well, uh, go ahead and grab a cup of coffee and a pastry from the fridge. Dave gave me some extras after helping him clean up last night. Oh, awesome. I'll, uh, I'll go do that. God, this is awkward tension. is fucking unbearable. I swiftly shuffle over to the kitchen. A little caffeine and food will hopefully improve my mood. Come to think of it, I didn't have dinner last night. When life gets overwhelming, I'm prone to skip a few meals. I can't keep letting that happen. Although, losing a few panels wouldn't be the worst thing. Maybe it's for the best. No, no, I can't get trapped in a thought spiral this early in the morning. I need to fix breakfast. I make a quick, a quick, cu a quick coffee cup by inserting the nifty plastic coffee pod into the machine. These things are lifesavers. They can brew a nice single serve, a nice, a nice single serving in less than two minutes. Like no. Checking the fridge, I see a clear container with an assortment of pastries inside. There's a lot to choose from. I decide on chocolate eclair and a Boston cream donut. I chew on the eclair while I wait for my coffee to finish brewing. It's a tad stale, but scrumptious nonetheless. The custard filling is creamy and delicious. The pastry is flaky and buttery, and the chocolate topping is, a rich, and is rich and divine. Excellent work, Dave. I'd love to try a fresh one sometime soon. I'll save the Boston cream for the road. Once my coffee's finished, I bring it and the donut back to the living room. <sighs> I'm ready when you are. Mm, sounds good. We never made proper eye contact during this exchange. She quickly shifts to her feet and grabs her keys off the table. I silently follow behind her out the, out the door to the car. I sip on my coffee and chow on my donut in silence for the first few minutes of the car ride. The lingering tension from our awkward, from our awkward encounter last night is still looming. God, I can't stand this! I see no signs that she's willing to break the ice here, so I guess it's gonna have to be me. So, uh, can we talk about it? Nope. She quit back at me instantly. Really, April? You're gonna dismiss this that fast? What? Why not? Clearly something happened and it's bothering the both of us. We need to discuss... Dude, there's literally nothing that needs to be discussed. There she goes, interrupting me again. Yes, there is. You saw my whole self. N now there's this awkward tension between... Yeah, well, if you just covered up your dick in the first place, this would have never happened. She did it again. I told you it was an accident. I... Oh, yeah, sure. You accidentally walked out and walked out with your dick flopped out. Great job. You know, I could have went my whole life not knowing what your dick looks like. That's it. I've had it. Jeez, would you quit talking about my dick so much? For a lesbian, you sure love to keep my dick in your mouth. Oh! ho 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 Oh my god! Oh my god, he did not just fucking say that. Oh my god, it's so... Oh man. As a response to my outburst, she places a paw in her mouth with a gasp. Ah, oh, fuck, I'm about to get it. Might as well start thinking about packing my bags. Ha! <laughs> Wait, she's, she's laughing? Why is she laughing? Her laughter dies down to a quiet cackle. Oh man, that was good. That was a good one. Wow, I'm not gonna lie, I thought you were gonna be really pissed. Nah, I can be a cunt sometimes, so, but I have a sense of humor. I don't think I'd ever use that word to describe her, but at least she's self-aware. She chuckles once more before making her next statement. You're right, though. We shouldn't let the awkward tension linger. Huh. Who would have thought... Who would have thought... Who, who would have known making her laugh was the ticket? Also, look, Mariah and I talked about it, too. In case you're self-conscious about it, I'm not. I'm not repulsed by what I saw. You're definitely not my type, but you're not a bad-looking dude. It just sounds like empty flattery to me. No, for real. I'm, I'm into. I'm, I'm not. I'm not into body shaming. You have a really strong frame. I'm sure some guys will go crazy for it. You like who? The men on the dating apps who would vehement would vehemently disagree. If you say so. All right, fine. Don't believe me. Mariah agrees too. You know. You should give yourself more credit. 
In all seriousness, no. In all seriousness, no. In all seriousness, though, I'm sorry if I made you feel bad. Oh, wow. I wasn't thinking I was going to get an apology out of this exchange. It's okay. I'm sorry, too. I'm not going to let that happen again. You better not. I don't want to see your dick again. She chuckled as she nudged my arm. This conversation took a turn I didn't expect. The tension is certainly lifted. I feel like we actually carry on with a normal conversation. So, anyway, speaking of Araya, I didn't see her this morning. Was she still asleep? Uh, no. She's at her orientation today, remember? Oh, crap! Her first day of art school! I forgot! This is the first time I'll... This is the first time she'll be in a, she'll be in a school since her transition, and she doesn't know anyone. Aw, oh, shit, I forgot. Wish I caught her before she left to give her some uh, encouragement. I'll give her a quick text. Hey, hope your orientation goes well. Text if you need anything. Talk to you later. Y'all really need to stop worrying about each other so much. It's in our nature. We're foxes. We're very anxious. Yeah, but it's the 21st century. We've evolved way past those animalistic instincts. You can choose to think past that kind of stuff, you know. Easy for you to say. What kind of stuff do you need to think past? Laughing loudly at every joke you hear? I managed to hit another funny bone. She's cackling again. You species this little shit. I'll kick your ass out of this car for saying crap like that. Again, her tone is sarcastic and jovial. No, I don't want to walk. I sarcastically plead. Okay, but for real. I know you and Mariah are from bumfuck nowhere, but you're in the city now. You gotta watch your mouth. Yeah, yeah, you're right. I'm sorry. Hey, no need to apologize to me. We're cool. I think shit like this is funny. You can joke about my lesbianisms and hyenaisms all you want with me. But that does not give you a free pass to do that to others, especially other lesbians or hyenas. Noted, but it feels like it should go without saying. It helps to be nudged in the right direction, especially since I'm in a new environment. Oh man, what am I going to do with you two? Which two? You and Mariah, you both got a sense of humor that vibes with me. Not many people around here do. We were approaching the shop's parking lot. The short remainder of the drive was spent in silence, but April has a slight smirk on her face. April and I walk in through the back door and we both clock in for the day. Second now. Mm. Just like yesterday, Pat and Dave were hard at work making fresh pastries for the front display case. Chester also lending a helping paw. Morning, you two. Morning. Yo. Looks like we're all here. Let's get our team meeting going. But boss, I'm not done creaming those holes yet. He exclaimed this with a sarcastically sultry tone. Pat was piping custard and some Boston cream donuts. Dave let out a chuckle. Chester looked unamused. April and I both rolled our eyes. As we made our way to the dining area for the meeting, April whispers in my ear. See, Pat doesn't get my sense of humor. It's just a bunch of cheesy sex jokes. Is that all he's got? Yep. Known the dude since middle school. His humor hasn't changed since. Oh no. We gathered around the same table that we did yesterday. The paperwork was already stacked neatly on the table. Dave reaches for the stack and flips through the sheets. All right, my turn today. He pushes his hair out of his face and adjusts his glasses as he studies the page in his paws. So, first order of business. Betty needs more training today. I see here from Chester's notes you're fixing to learn more on the cafe side, huh? Yeah, I want to try it out and see how I like it. Well, that's no problem. I'll have you back here with me and Pat. You can help us open up, and then you can stay through lunch. He gives a reassuring grin. I glance over at Pat, who wiggles his eyebrows upon noticing me gaze in his direction. Oh, brother, is he going to cause trouble for me today? Pat? He whispered when he spoke to the dog. Pat's expression took a 180. He certainly got the message. So, that leaves Chester and April to open up front of house. Dream team right there. Couldn't agree more. Moving on to breaks, before lunch rush we can let Pat go first, since he's been here since 6 this morning. April can have a break afterwards while Chester watches front of house, then we can give Eddie a break after lunch rush. And then? After Eddie comes back, you can clock out, Pat. I can clock out when? You you promised. You'll be clocking out at 2.30. 2.30? What? Pat begs the question. 2.30 sharp. Dave's tone is devoid of amusement for Pat's game. That's right. He wasn't so keen on leaving work right on time yesterday. I wonder what he's got planned. Eddie, since you're fixing to get some OT, want to stay until closing again? Yes, he said the magic word. Absolutely. He'll close with me. You'll be out for a couple hours a day again, love. You'll be out for a couple hours a day again, love? Yep, I'll be shooting to be, be out by one and back by four. Oh, an extra hour. Is it full full body? Is it full body day? Something like that. Chester gave, gives Dave a wink. Dave has a smirk spread on his face. What's that about? 
So, April will clock out after Chester gets back. Then Eddie and Chester will take care of the close down at 7. <sighs> Sounds like a good day to me. Great! Next order of business, show night on Saturday. We have uh, Libra Zebra, Sands of Saturn, and Carcinogen lined up. We might get a three-hour show out of that at most. I only got 30 minutes of Carcinogen in me. I could play SOS songs all day, though. Either way, we should look at getting more acts. April, could you start asking more folks to see uh, UC playing on the shop floor if they'd be interested in doing a solo act? The first hour doesn't get much traction anyways, and it'd be nice to get a few folks on stage to fill time. Sure, I can ask. You realize this little talent show you're putting together is going to be a bit of a hodgepodge, right? I know, but I really want a, ni I really want a night to showcase local talent. We have enough regional headliners come through here, and I think the folks around here need to see what Douglas can offer. I'll see what I can do. My girlfriend just entered the arts program at Douglas Scott University. Maybe she'll meet some douche with an acoustic guitar who can cover Wanderfall or something. Honestly, that'd be better than nothing. I'll also talk with a young man who I met at the gym recently. He's allegedly a skilled pianist. Alright, I'm gonna pause it right there. Thank y'all so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, ring that notification bell, and check out our Patreon if you can. It always helps. Before I go, I'm gonna give a quick shout out to our lovely bronze tier patrons. Thank y'all for I do for the channel. We greatly appreciate your support. Thank you to our silver tier patron, Cade Silverman. Thank you for going a bit above and beyond. It's greatly appreciated. Thank you to our gold tier patron, Tresum Guy. You're awesome. We love you. Thank you for subbing to our ultimate tier. Anyway, if y'all want to get your names in the credits, get access to all of our not safe for work contents as little as $5. Alrighty, I love you all, and I'll see y'all in the next video. Bye bye!